Welcome to Lecture 1.1, Introduction to Propositional Logic and Logical Connectives. Logic. Logic is a science that deals with the principles and criteria of validity of inference and demonstration. Also, logic is the science of the formal principles of reasoning. Why study logic? We study logic to enable us to first develop critical thinking, evaluate the arguments in any discipline. Meaning to say, hindi lang sa logic itself or sa math or science, whatever, ginagamit ang logic kundi in every aspect or in every discipline possible. And even in our real life. Third is to distinguish the good from the bad. Persuade effectively. So of course, if you are logical, you... You reason out correctly, accordingly, then you may persuade people effectively. Next, we study logic to spot fallacies and correct them and to avoid doing them. And last but not the least, we study logic to stick to the facts in making wise decisions. In this lecture, we will discuss about the propositional logic. It is a branch of logic that deals with propositions and the relations between them, including the construction of arguments based on them. Let us define what a proposition is. A proposition is a declarative sentence whose truth value is either true or false, but not both. All right, we have here 10 sentences. Let us determine whether they are proposition or not. First, oh no, this one is not a proposition because it is an interjection and an exclamatory sentence. Second, I'm falling in love again. This one is a proposition because it is a declarative sentence. Third, oh, this is not a proposition, just like in number one. Fourth, I'm falling in love. This is also a proposition. Fifth, I thought the plane was going down. Also a proposition. Sixth, how do you turn it right around? This one is not a proposition because it is an interrogative sentence, a question. Hence, any questions are not propositions because they are not declarative. Seventh, please type Hezoyam. This one is not a proposition because it is imperative. Or in Filipino, pautos. Or pakiusap. Eighth, less is more. This one, you may say that this is a declarative sentence, but it is not. Why? Because it is contradictory. Always remember that a proposition, the truth value is either true or false, but not both. Here in the eighth example, we cannot determine whether it's true or false because this one is subjective. Ninth, 5 plus 2 is equal to 8. This one is a proposition. Tenth, it was allowed silence. Here in this sentence, we have an oxymoron, loud silence. So that is contradictory, hence this entire sentence is not a proposition. In logic, simple propositions are usually denoted by letters P, Q, and R, whose truth values are known or can be known. First, let's have here proposition P, Sampagita is a flower. Since we know that Sampagita is indeed a flower, then P is true. Next, Q, a pig is a plant. Well, we know that pig is an animal and not a plant, hence Q is false. And the next we have today is February as R. R is either true or false because, and it is not stated here when the original statement was stated. Just like in the English language, we also have what we call compound propositions. Compound propositions can be made by combining simple propositions using connectors in the English language, that is, 
conjunctions and some operators like negation. So let us use the three propositions that we used from the previous slide. We have P, Q, and R. We can actually form compound sentences from them. First, P and Q. Sampagita is a flower and a pig is a plant. Next, if P, then Q or R. If Sampagita is a flower, then a pig is a plant or today is February. We shall discuss the following connectors in the next slide. This is the summary of the logical symbols and connectives. We have the negation. We have the following symbol. And then for conjunction, disjunction, exclusive disjunction, conditional, and biconditional. These are the propositional forms that we can do. When we say propositional form, that is the logical form of propositions expressed using propositional variables P, Q, and R connected by logical connectives or symbols. So we will discuss this one by one. First, let us discuss about truth tables. These are constructed to determine the truth value of a compound proposition. These tables contain the combinations of truth values of its two or more arbitrary propositions. Example 1. If we have P and Q, two propositions forming a compound proposition S, there are four truth combinations for P and Q. So for P, we have TTFF, true, true, false, false. And then for the Q, we have true, false, true, false. So when you see it, we have a unique combination for each truth value. And then for S, let's just take this one as a compound proposition, unknown compound proposition. Next, what if we have three propositions? So we have eight truth combinations here. So we have eight unique combinations. Always remember that they are unique. So what is the purpose in doing this? We want to investigate whether the entire compound proposition S is valid or not valid. So we will discuss about that. Hence, in general, given K propositions, the number of truth combinations is 2 raised to K. So if we have here five propositions, then when we form a compound proposition altogether using the five, we will have 32, 2 raised to 5, 32 truth combinations, hence 32 rows in our truth table. Let us discuss about the first operation. We have the negation. It is read as not. If P is true, then not P is false or vice versa. They cannot be true at the same time. This is the truth table for negation for P and its negation. If the original statement is true, then its negation is false. But if the proposition is false, then its negation is true. Example for negation, given the following propositions, let P, Q, and R represent them and construct the truth table of each. First, Pedro is Sally's son. So we will use propositional variable to express this. For P, Pedro is Sally's son. And then for the not P, Pedro is not Sally's son. So we just simply add not after the is. So we just negate whichever verb is written here. And then next, we will construct the truth table for this. We have the following combination. So true, false, false, true. So why is that? This is arbitrary. We do not know who Pedro is. But one of these two truth combinations will work. Second, the month of April contains 34 days. For Q, the month of April contains 34 days. And for the negation of Q, the month of April does not contain 34 days. 
So for the truth table of this statement, we have here only one row. Why is that? Because we know the specific truth value of this sentence. We know that Q is false. That is only the, that is the reality. And then for the not Q, that is true. So the difference between our example in number one and number two, in number two, we have a specific example here wherein we can directly say whether Q is true or false. However, for number one, we do not know who Pedro is, who Sally is, and we do not know whether Pedro is indeed Sally's son. So we can create a general truth table for that. Third, five is not an even number. So whenever we are using propositional variables, always remember that, take a look at this, R, five is an even number. So we do not include the not whenever we are trying to represent the proposition using variables. So here we will exclude the not so that our R will be positive. So R is an even number. And then the not R, the original statement, 5 is not an even number. Or we can also say 5 is an odd number. This is the truth table for this. So just like in number 2, this is specific. R and not R, we have F, false, true. Next, let's have the conjunction. This is read as and. P and Q is true only when P and Q are both true. So this is the truth table for P and Q. So it is only true when both propositions P and Q are true. Otherwise, the conjunction is false. P and Q is an example of a compound proposition because we have simple propositions P and Q combined together using the connective and. Take note that P and not P is false. Let's have the following examples for conjunction. 1 plus 1 is equal to 3 and 3 is a factor of 5. So since we have here a compound proposition, we will split them into simple propositions. For P, 1 plus 1 is equal to 3. And then for Q, 3 is a factor of 5. Since, this, since our P and our Q are both specific, we can directly tell whether they are true or not. This will be our truth table for that. Rp is false. Of course, 1 plus 1 is not equal to 3. Q is also false because 3 is not a factor of 5. Therefore, when we combine them all together, both false. So P and Q is also false. So that is the truth value of the conjunction P and Q. Next, Kosuke was born in Japan and Sota was born in China. Again, we do not know who Kosuke is and who Sota is. These are our propositions. P. Kosuke was born in Japan. Q. Sota was born in China. Since we do not know them, we are going to make or construct a general truth table. The general truth table for that is simply the truth table for the definition of conjunction. Next is the disjunction. So this one is read as or. P or Q is true when at least one of P and Q is true. So this one is the truth table for P or Q. So at least one of the P or Q is true. But if both are false, then P or Q is also false. Let's have the following examples. Either 1 plus 1 is equal to 3 or 3 is odd. For our P, 1 plus 1 is equal to 3. And for our Q, 3 is odd. So this one is a specific example. So our truth table here will be simple. This is it. P is false. Q is true. 
So P or Q is true because at least one of the P or Q must be true for this to be true. Next, 1 plus 5 is equal to 6 and either June 12 is a Philippine holiday or violet is a mixture of green and black. So in this example, we have compound propositions that involve the conjunction also. We have here end. Okay, they connect two propositions. Yung end na nandito, hindi yan logical connective because take note, violet is a mixture of green and black so we cannot, we, we are no longer going to split this into two. Okay, the structure of this one is P and Q or R. For our P, 1 plus 5 is equal to 6. For our Q, June 12 is a Philippine holiday. And then for our R, violet is a mixture of green and black. This is the truth table for that. All of these propositions are specific. We can definitely say whether each is true or not true. So we have the following truth table. P is true. Q is true. R is false. But in our structure, we are required to get Q or R. Q or R is true. O pag pinagsama natin P and Q or R, that will be true. So we will discuss more of this in the next lecture video. Next that we have is the exclusive disjunction read as X or. P, X or R is a P, X, or R is true when only one of P and Q is true. So ito, ginagamit natin yung X or kapag hindi pwedeng sabay na maging totoo yung P at saka yung Q. They cannot happen at the same time. So these are applicable for mutually exclusive events. Okay, example, either 1 plus 1 is odd or even. For our P, 1 plus 1 is odd. For our Q, 1 plus 1 is even. Only one of them is true, and that is Q. P is false. Q is true. So P, X, or Q is true. Next, either today is Monday or Tuesday. Take note that we will use the X or here because it cannot happen that today is both Monday and Tuesday. P is today is Monday, Q today is Tuesday. So since this one is general, let us create a general truth table here. So true, true, false, true, false, true, false, true, true, and false, false, false. So this is simply the truth table for X or. Next, we have the conditional statements, conditional propositions. So this one is read as implies or if then. P implies Q is false only when the Q is false. So what are P and Q here? P is the antecedent, hypothesis, or the premise. Q is the consequent or the conclusion. And then P implies Q or if P then Q or P is sufficient for Q is what we call the conditional statement. So take note that only... It will only become false when the conclusion or the consequent is false. Okay, let us talk about each on the next slide because this is a little bit confusing. Suppose that we have here a specific example. Let us use a building with exactly 17 floors in reality. Okay, let us create the table of uh, values of if P then Q here with specific examples. First, for the true, 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 the Queen Palace Tower has exactly 17 floors. So that is true based on our given context. Our Q here, the Queen Palace Tower has at least 17 floors. So that is also true. So when we combine them all together, if the Queen Palace Tower has 17 floors, then it has at least 15 floors. So that is true because both P and Q are also true. Next, 
The Queen Palace Tower has 17 floors, so that is true. And then for the conclusion or the consequent, the Queen Palace has at most 18 floors. False yun, kasi nga 17 floors tayo. So hindi pwedeng maximum number of floors is 15, so that's false. Ngayon, if you combine them together, if the Queen Palace Tower has exactly 17 floors, then it has at most 15 floors. So that is false. Because simply the antecedent and the consequent do not make sense at all when combined together. So this is false. The Queen Palace has exactly 15 floors, so this is false. Because based on our context, it has 17 floors exactly. So if we have here a false antecedent and then the I and then the conclusion is true, so let's see. The, if the Queen Palace Tower has exactly 15 floors, then it has at least 15 floors. So that will be true. <coughs> Take note that here in the conditional statement, do not um do not overthink about what happens in reality. Think about the context or think about the scenario the conditional statement is giving. Okay? And then for the last, the Queen Palace Tower has exactly 15 floors. That is false in reality. And then the conclusion is the Queen Palace Tower has at most 15 floors. So this is also false with respect to the reality. But if we combine them together as a conditional statement, if the Queen Palace Tower has exactly 15 floors, then it has at most 15 floors. So this one is true. The scenario is true. So whether in reality, both P and Q are false. Always remember that logic does not care about what happens in real life or what our interpretation could be. So it only cares about the truth value of each statement. Last, we have the biconditional. This is read as if and only if. P if and only if is true only when P and Q are both true or both false. So this is also read as P is equivalent to Q. P exactly when Q. Remarks, all definitions are biconditional statements. And P if and only if Q is symmetric. So meaning to say, when we say symmetric, this is also the same as Q if and only if P. This is the truth table for the biconditional statement. So again, it is only true when P and Q are both true or both false. Let us have examples for the biconditional. Let us use variables to represent this. 1 plus 2 is equal to 4 if and only if 4 times 2 is equal to 9. P, 1 plus 2 is equal to 4. Q, 4 times 2 is equal to 9. Okay, let us form the propositional form of this. So that is P if and only if Q. So here we have a false P and false Q. So when we combine them together in a biconditional statement, the biconditional statement is true. Next, 1 plus 5 is odd exactly when cosine of pi over 4 is greater than 1. So we know that cosine pi over 4 is equal to square root of 2 over 2 and that is greater than 1. This is the truth table for this specific example. P is false and then Q is true. So therefore, P if and only if Q is false. You have reached the end of this lecture. You are hereby encouraged to answer the following exercise.